How many of us have been at crossroads while having to choose between our career and family? Let us reflect on this question for a few seconds. At one end stands a rare opportunity of our dreams, while at the other is our family. Having to make a choice between our career and family is extremely difficult. Let me take you back to 2009 when I was at the peak of my career at one of the leading consulting firms at Plano, a small suburban city in the state of Texas. I was seated with the president of my company who out of the blue offered me the green card, the most coveted reward of my American dream. My eyes lit up on hearing the news. That night, I was celebrating with my friends when I received a call from my younger sister in Mumbai. Sunita spoke with a stutter. Shekhar, Dad has had a stroke last night and is undergoing surgery. The next 48 hours are critical. Mom isn't holding up well. Is there any chance that you can make it home? I couldn't sleep a wink thereafter and took the next flight out to Mumbai. Luckily for us, my father responded well to the treatment and recovered in three days. Two weeks passed and I was back in Plano with the American dream staring right at my face. At one end, there was the joy of embracing a lifetime opportunity, while at the other, there was the guilt of not being there with my family. The sight of my father breathing through a ventilator in an operation room flashed in front of my eyes. I turned that offer down and took the decision to relocate back to Mumbai for good. I had no career plan in mind. After two weeks of rest, I started my job search. After two grueling months of interviews across industries, finally I settled for a sales job at a chemicals company. Yet there was something troubling me. All my friends were either happily settled in the US or hustling to work through the chaotic streets of Mumbai. And there I was, confused, with only my life appearing to be lacking a larger purpose. Then, at an onboarding event of my new company, a colleague popped a question at the lunch table. Why on earth did you join this industry, which is on the brink of collapse? My face turned pale. I could feel the sweat trickle down my back. At that instant, I began questioning my decision to relocate to India. Over the next few weeks, I began questioning every move that I had made since the beginning of my career. I was left in a state of confusion. The next day, while I was delivering a sales pitch at the client's office, my feet began shivering. My mind went blank. I couldn't speak thereafter. And my colleagues had to step in and bail me out of this embarrassing situation. That night, I kept replaying that episode in my mind again and again and again. Imagine a tiny speck of snow rolling down a hill. With each passing rotation, it gathers more snow and eventually builds up into a large snowball. The large snowball now moves erratically 
down the hill without any control. When we hold on to a tiny seed of thought triggered by a negative episode, it grows in power. Each time we replay that episode in our minds, it grows further, eventually engulfing our mind to a point of no return. And that is what happened to me. I struggled to face my colleagues and withdrew from every social interaction. While at home, I'd remain lost in thought, barely connecting with my family. Six months passed by as I dragged myself to work every day without sleep. I had begun hallucinating and my anxiety had started turning into panic attacks. Facing people had now become an insurmountable challenge. It took me nine months, the help of my family and a psychiatrist and some medication to restore my mental health back in order. During these nine months, I discovered a learning model that helped me evolve out of that challenge. This model can be broken down into four distinct elements. The first element of that model is the challenge that confronts us. Being concerned with my unstable behavior, Radhika, my wife, urged me to consult a therapist. I outrightly denied the possibility of my suffering from clinical depression and anxiety. I'd grown up to believe that therapists are only meant for mentally weak individuals. Few weeks passed and I remained firm on my argument. But Radhika was determined. In the end, she prevailed and I began my journey with a counsellor. The medication and counselling sessions fueled a catharsis a liberation of sorts, releasing every speck of negativity from my system. Then, on a cold and chilly morning, I was awestruck, noticing my three-year-old daughter, Kyra, completely immersed in her toys. She appeared to be relishing each moment as if nothing else mattered. It was at this moment I felt a shift, a moment of incredible insight, an extraordinary revelation. Accepting the challenge was the key step that triggered my transformation. This brings us to the second element, that is, action. Dan Millman the author of The Way of the Peaceful Warrior has said, Take out the trash. The trash is anything that is keeping you from the only thing that matters. This moment. Here. Now. And when you truly are in the here and the now, you'd be amazed at what you can do and how well you can do it. When I was caught up in a snowball of regrets, the snowball had overpowered me, preventing me from taking action. I had slipped into a deadly state of inertia. In that state, the negative consequences of any action began appearing amplified in my mind. Prior to taking any action, I'd be seduced into making excuses. Excuses such as, why is only my life filled with challenges? What is the use of pursuing this activity when luck is never on my side? Noticing Kyra 
being immersed in her toys induced a tectonic shift in my thought process. I went from a miserable why me mindset to a more curious how to mindset. This was the much desired eureka moment I'd been looking for. From that moment onwards, I made a fresh start and began charting out a plan of action daily. Without ruminating over the quality of my plan, I focused on execution. Whenever I got stuck, I made it a point to seek help without batting an eyelid. At the end of each day, I would take stock of what I had accomplished and feel very good. This feeling of euphoria helped me spend quality time with my family, establishing a genuine bond with them. And at that point, I discovered the third element of the model. Repetition. Small actions repeated consistently over a sustained period have created for me an incredible impact. That impact motivated me to chart out a weekly plan. With conscious effort, I graduated onto weekly goals and monthly targets. Then a routine was set. At the end of the year, me and those around me were amazed at what I had accomplished, not only professionally, but also personally. I felt a sense of fulfillment and joy. Living each moment to the fullest requires conscious and deliberate practice. That brings us to the last element of the model, evolution. When we achieve a state of fulfillment and happiness, we tend to settle into an equilibrium or a comfort zone. Let us delve a little deeper into this. As we take on a new challenge, the initial part of our performance curve dips. Generally, this happens because we are on a learning curve. And learning, as we all know, always comes at a cost. If we remain consistent with our pursuit, despite these cursory disappointments, and follow through with utmost sincerity and discipline, we are likely to witness several Eureka moments along the journey. Consequently, our sustained efforts through repetition shall then steeply rise to a point of peak performance. Eventually, we evolve to reach a new state of equilibrium. Although we would have acquired a new skill by overcoming the first challenge, our learning trajectory begins to taper off or plateau. If we desire to evolve out of this equilibrium state, we must consciously choose our next challenge. Evolution is thus the outcome of continuous experiments that result from consciously challenging the status quo. The success of the care learning model is predicated on how consciously we recalibrate this model with a new challenge each time we settle into a new state of equilibrium. I want to emphasize a key point here. Having made a choice, if we regret our choices long enough, we are likely to drop far below on the performance curve, eventually spiraling into depression. If we desire to evolve out of depression, we must act. And seeking help from family or a professional is also action. Bear in mind, seeking help is not a sign of weakness. 
Crossroads and challenges will eternally be a part of our journey, forcing us to make a difficult choice between two alternatives. Whether we accept or regret the choices that we make shall determine whether we evolve out of or dissolve into them. Thank you.